The Hypogeus Oil Mill of Castrid Lecce is located in the central part of this small town and, more exactly, under Piazza dei Caduti, once called the Pascalis Square, in the ancient feud of Castri Francone near San Vito Church. The presence of the oil mill was known to the people of the town, but neither the location nor the dimension of it were known. On the 2nd of April 1996, part of the street and of the square crashed, giving light to an abandoned and forgotten Hypogeus oil mill. It was full of debris and ruins probably dating back to the 1940s, when the preservation of this kind of structures and testimonies were not of any cultural interest. In 1996, the fallen part was opportunity filled and kept in safety to preserve the near houses. It was made a retaining wall partially built on a mill crusher. Later, they had to start work for the recovery and consolidation in order to avoid further damage to the underground structure. Analysis and the studies led in 1997 helped to correctly position the different spaces inside the oil mill. In 1998, the work of cleaning of all the material improperly put inside the Dipogeus oil mill made it possible to give correct information about the entry stairs, the exact dimension of the oil mill itself and of the shave, the number and the positioning of the mollus stones, of the presses, the possible presence of further rooms. Near the entrance of the Hypogeus oil mill, just at the end of the stairs on the right side, some drawings on the stones are clearly visible. There is the date 1703, which might represent the origin of this oil mill, and the name Spera, which was the nickname of a family from Castri that probably worked here. Nearby, you can see other drawings that probably were the counting of working days or millings. If you look carefully, it's possible to see a male face profile, buried for centuries with the oil mill as if to preserve the memory and history of this place. To the east, south and west of the main area, other irregular and smaller rooms were dug in the rock. Here we can find the shave, a kind of a chimney dug in the stone, connecting the street to the oil mill. Through the shave, olives were thrown inside the oil mill, waiting for the working process. The dormitory and the kitchen. The number of workers in the Hypogeus oil mill, Trapitari, went from four up to six people. There were usually seasonal workers who, 
and the summer worked as a sailor's. When the weather was bad, they spent the winter working in the oil mill until the end of the oil production. Used to living without socializing, the work was accomplished 24 hours a day, with the resting periods in the same oil mill, so to be woken up in case of need. They slept on sewn sacks full of leaves. The workers ate together, sharing the same pans, and their meals consisted of legumes and vegetables, the typical fava beans and chicory. In this small feud there was a real hierarchy. The Nakiru was the squad leader and the fiduciary of the owner of the oil mill. The Suta Nakiru, the vice squad leader, was a sort of a superintendent and shared responsibility with the Nakiru. The Kwensu had the duty to empty and fill up the fiscule, circular sacks that subject to pressure allowed the extraction of the mast. The Churliku, the youngest member of the group, had the several duties, like taking care of the donkey, keep the fire always lit, drawing water from the well, washing the tools and so on. The Trapicharu, who brought the olive oil from the oil mill to customers' houses. The animals also lived here, in a corner used as a stall. These poor beasts, which had a short life, worked without any pause, turning around the old pressing basin, pushing the millstone. Other shave, used as a storage for the olives, radiate off from a second molar stone. The roofs and the walls of all these spaces are of nude rock. Bringing to light this oil mill and giving the chance to visit it not only represents the recovery of the memory of the work and the production of oil, but it is the most direct way to recover cultural testimonies legacy of a tangible memory. All this connects to our roots that, starting from the Phoenicians and Greeks through the Arabs and Romans, allow us to recognize the importance the olive tree has had for the whole Salento.